How do you write and balance chemical equations or chemical reactions in chemistry? Well, these are the rules, and in this video I'm going to go over two examples. We're going to write a word equation, chemical equation, and use an atom or ion count chart. Plus, we're going to go over a particle view, which is by far, in my opinion, the most important aspect of a chemical equation so you understand what's happening to the particles and their bonds and how they're reacting. If you'd like a copy of these notes, go to the YouTube description below and print them before we get started here. Also, I have YouTube videos of my own that are linked in the Google Doc that are classifying reactions and also mole ratios. So you can use those in addition to this video. All right, let's get started. So you can read through those rules. That's what we're going to follow when we do our balancing our equation. So step one, you just have to read it and then take it and transpose it basically into chemical formulas. So methane is an organic molecule, and some people just say that that's a common name for CH4. I guess you could call it carbon tetrahydride. Since it's a gas, we're going to put this little g in kind of a, sometimes people subscript it. The other thing is leave a little space, maybe even put a line in front of it so that you have room to add a coefficient to balance it and follow the law of conservation. So I'm going to do the same thing, leave a little line. And then oxygen gas is a really common mistake. People don't remember their diatomics. So oxygen gas is O2. You might want to list that hydrogen, if I use hydrogen in a reaction, it would be H2, oxygen of course, and then nitrogen would be N2, and then you have your halogens, fluorine, chlorine, iodine, and bromine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A lot of people call these the Brinkelhoff twins. Okay, so let's go back to our reaction, but oxygen is one of the diatomic elements. All right, so then we have to produce. So the arrow means to produce, and kind of with or in means plus. But then we have products on the right side of the arrow. Okay, so if you don't know that these are called the reactants, I'll just do this this one time. And then on this side are products. And our products of this reaction, which you'll learn how to classify later, is our carbon dioxide, so CO2. It's a covalent molecule, again, named with prefixes and also water vapor, but water vapor is a common name, so we don't usually call it dihydrogen monoxide. Now, could water be a liquid once it cools down? Absolutely, but since this reaction is actually a combustion or involves burning, which is some people even put a little triangle above the arrow like that, um, that just means that we're gonna heat it, so the water could be in the gaseous form. All right, now moving on to balancing. So what you'll want to do is list your elements on both sides, and they, you have to have the same elements on both sides. You can't really gain new elements or lose any elements. And they're carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I just kept them in the same order. And then let's just write down what we have right away. So there's one carbon right there, and then there are four hydrogens bonded to that to make it methane. And then there are two oxygens in your diatomic molecule there. Then there's one carbon in the carbon dioxide, and then the oxygen is actually in two places, here and here, which is three. I'm going to go over here and do that one next. And then the hydrogen, there's only two in the water molecule. So right away, we do not have a balanced equation. We have to use coefficients because we are kind of gaining some atoms and losing others at this point, and that's not possible. All right, so... First thing I like to do, sometimes balancing is trial and error, I like to make sure that things are like even. So I'm going to put a 2 as a coefficient in front of the water, and what that does is it changes my hydrogen to be 4, because I say I have 2 water molecules, or I have 2 times the hydrogen is 4. And then because I have 2 water molecules, I have 2 times 1, which is uh uh, two for oxygen, sorry. And then I have to add it to this other oxygen. So let me say that one more time. So two times one is just two. And then I have two more over here. So this is four. So now the good news is my carbon is balanced. My hydrogen is balanced. Now I just have to get my oxygen to balance. And since on the left side, the oxygen is only in that diatomic molecule, I can put a two in front of there, which makes it two times two, which is four. Now, if you don't fully understand how I'm getting these numbers, that to me, again, is why the particle view is so important. But let's just check that everything checks out. I have one carbon, I have four hydrogen, and I have four oxygen. And then I tell my students to put the ones because the ones are important. I want you to know that there is a number there. It's just a one, and there's nothing against putting the one. Because when I draw these, I'm going to treat this as one molecule of methane, two molecules of oxygen, one molecule of carbon dioxide, and two molecules of water. 
Now, later on in future videos, I'll actually talk about that these are really mole amounts, one mole, two mole, one mole, two mole. But for right now, let's just draw one methane. Now, you'd have to go back to a previous video on how to draw Vesper structures and dot structures first, I guess. But I'm just going to tell you that methane would be this um, trigonal, or not trigonal, sorry, tetrahedral shape. Sorry, tetrahedral shape. Tetra, since I said it wrong, tetrahedral. Not, not tri whatever I said was wrong. It's tetrahedral, okay? Um, but then we're going to add it to two oxygen molecules. Now, oxygen molecules have a double bond. Again, why? You'd have to go back to the dust structure and then do the Vesper structure. Usually we use red in model kits for oxygen, black for carbon, and white for hydrogen. So that's what I'm going to follow with the video I'm making for you. All right, then they would produce. So again, look how I drew one methane, two oxygen. Now, what were the products of this? I still had to have all those atoms, but they have to be bonded differently. My carbon actually double bonded to two oxygen. And again, why is carbon dioxide um, a double bond on both sides? Again, you'd have to go back. I have videos on Lewis dot structures and Vesper shapes if you'd like to watch them. But we get two uh, double bonds for the carbon to the oxygen. And then we have two water molecules. Actually, I'll just switch off right now. There's one two oxygens and then what happens is they bond to one two hydrogen each so there's two of these water molecules i'm just going to make that black if you want to put the states of matter here you can but right now i'm just doing kind of like a particulate inventory now this is why i really like the particle view you get to see that these molecules have to collide there also has to be heat for this reaction, and when they reform, they form into CO2, completely different bonds and water molecules. But you can check, look, one carbon, one carbon, one, two, three, four hydrogen, one, two, three, four, all the hydrogen went into the water molecules. Then there's one, two, three, four oxygen, and two bonded to the carbon, and two sort of became the center of their own molecule for water. Great, okay. Let's move on to something that's not so what I call molecular, meaning could there be atoms or ions? So the next example I have, we really, gonna we really are gonna focus on atoms and ions more. So copper solid, you just would see you is, and it's not diatomic, and you put S for solid, leave a space. So that's just a, the element copper, and then leave a space again, silver nitrate. So this again is where you're gonna need to have a chart or maybe you have it memorized. That silver is a one plus ion, nitrate is NO3, one minus, which is a polyatomic ion. I sometimes call them a polyatomic posse. And then because it's one plus and one minus, you only need one of each of those ions. So in no parentheses, we just push those two ions together. And then it's a solution. So we're gonna put AQ, which means aqueous. That's gonna be important when we get to the particulate view. What does that really mean to be aqueous? All right, next. We're going to make silver solid. So I'm going to put AG is the element symbol for silver and S for solid. And again, it's not a diatomic. So it's not one of those elements that you have multiples of or polyatomic. Then copper to nitrate. So copper is going to be a two plus, And that's because it says it's copper two. Some people also might call this cupric. That's just the old name for it. And then nitrate is still NO3 one minus. Now, this is where students will make a mistake because they'll use this two in a variety of different ways. It means it's two plus, and because of that, I will need two nitrates, I'm just gonna draw two of them, to balance the charge. And again, if you're having trouble writing ionic compounds, I have a video for that, so go look, search my YouTube channel and find it. But you're gonna say copper, and then you're gonna go parentheses, NO3, close parentheses, two. And then AQ because it's a solution again. So what that's saying is I had two of the nitrates and one of the copper ions. Now, for my atom ion inventory, I'm actually going to treat these as atoms and ions. And what do I mean by that? Copper is a neutral atom. So I'm going to put a zero. It hasn't gained or lost any electrons. Silver, when you start this reaction, is an ion. So it's a plus. Nitrate is a polyatomic ion. It's a minus. And I'm going to keep that polyatomic ion together because we saw it kind of stayed together as a product which is super common. Then we're gonna have silver, again, zero. What that means is it has not gained or lost any electrons, it's a neutral atom. Copper turns into a two plus ion and then nitrate. But again, I'm gonna keep it nitrate as just by itself. So how many do I have of each? So one copper, one silver, one nitrate. So one, one, one. 
And then on the product side, one silver, one copper, two nitrates. And we needed that to balance the charge that copper turns out to be. And that will be redox reactions in your future probably. Okay, so now let's just fix the nitrate. So we can do that by putting a two in front of the silver nitrate. That makes this turn into two and this silver ions turn into two. So the nitrate and the silver are two each. And then we just have to make sure that we have these all in order. Now I kind of have these in a, in, a, in a different order and that's okay. Let's just check, okay? So let's just do our check. So copper is there's one, nitrate is two. So it's just our silver that doesn't check out right now, but that's great because it's all by itself in the products. So you can put a two in front of there and make it a two and we are done. Again, I would put the ones, they are going to be what are called mole ratios or we can use them as molecules right now. Now, this particle view is going to be a little bit more intense, but I think it's worth it, especially if you have to move on to something called reduction oxidation chemistry. Okay, so let's just pretend again we have one copper, just one atom of copper, and I'm just going to color it kind of uh, orange because that's kind of what make, we probably think copper looks like. Okay, so there's our one atom of copper. Then I have silver nitrate in a solution. So what that means is I have loose silver ions. I'm going to have two of them. They're going to be these little dots right there and there. Okay, so the little, you may want to even have a particle key. I'm going to go like that. There's my little silver ion. And then my copper will be, um, I'll even put the little inventory up here. There we go. And then nitrate, again, why is it this? You're just going to have to trust me. But nitrate, and I'm not going to draw the bonds. It is a trigonal planar, and I, say that, I said that one right this time, trigonal planar structure with three oxygens here and then the nitrogen usually chemists use a blue for nitrogen in the middle so it kind of makes like a, a little triangular shape but it's called trigonal planar so i'm just going to draw two of those in here so here's one i'm just going to draw another one over here just so i can switch colors quickly and then it has this trigonal planar shape now this will be important to know the one thing that is keeping these away from each other they are actually not bonded are a bunch of water molecules and I'll even draw them facing the correct way. So if I have water, and this is a silver ion, we're going to have waters facing like this. And so a lot of people won't draw these, but really what you need to know is that these water molecules are going to be all over the place because that's what it means to be a Q or a solution, is that we have a lot of water molecules surrounding all of these ions like this, okay? Just draw one more right here. Now, why they're kind of facing a certain way, you may not have to worry about, but the key here is that the ions have um, been separated from each other and water molecules are in their way. Okay, so then what happens, okay? Then we make silver, two of them, as an atom. And I'm actually going to show that it's, you know, gained electrons and gotten maybe a little larger. So there's one two of those maybe right next to each other in what's called a metallic bond. Then copper, um, you don't have to worry about why, but it will kind of shrink down. It'll lose electrons and become smaller as what's called a cation. And there's only one of them. And then there are two nitrates. So the two nitrates, are, I'm going to still kind of draw them, one, two. And they still have their trigonal, planar, kind of fun little triangular looking shape. And if you have to move on to things like net ionics or spectator ions, this is a great thing to know that they have not really done anything. They are still really in the solution and being kept apart by, um, you know, these water molecules. I'm just going to draw quite a few again. All right. Now, there's quite a few people that maybe wouldn't even talk about the water molecules, and you're welcome to then, if you want to, just kind of ignore them. But in reality, you can't have something be AQ or aqueous without water. So if, you know, if this helps you a little bit, kind of do the count, that's great. I'm going to put a little plus in between these. So let's just check, okay? So we have one copper on each side. One time it's neutral, one time it's ion. Two silvers actually become atoms or metallic. And then two nitrates, one, two, one, two. So there we go. All right, so I hope this helped understand how to balance equations and how to kind of go through the law of conservation and kind of prepare you for the future of your chemistry experiences, which might involve redox or ionic reactions or what are called spectators, and also classifying these reactions in the next video. All right, good luck, chemists. Thanks for watching.